welcome to another edition of Yoga with Anne. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to be doing a chair yoga practice, which can be for someone who's maybe starting yoga and wants a slower practice, someone who might have difficulty getting up and down off the floor, someone who just wants to do something, maybe a little bit of a quieter practice today, all kinds of reasons that chair yoga can be beneficial for you. Um, so you'll need a chair. That's a prop that you'll need today. Um, you don't really necessarily need a chair that has a back. So the chair that um, I'm going to use does, but we're going to be sitting most of the time on the edge of the chair. So you could be on a sturdy coffee table, a sturdy stool. You want something that's really going to support you. So if your chair has wheels, make sure that they're locked. We want to make sure it doesn't move around as we're moving into different poses. There will be a few times that we will stand up. You're welcome to stay seated and I'll give you those options. Um, you just honor your body. No matter how simple or easy you think this is supposed to be, you need to remember to honor your own body. Um, so a chair, something to sit on, and then something that can be used for a strap, a yoga strap, a necktie, the belt to a bathrobe. We can also work around it if you just don't have anything that will work, but it'll make the stretch a little nicer if you have a prop to use. I'm gonna back up onto my chair and we will get started. So I have what's a typical yoga chair. It's just a folding chair, um, as you can see. So I do have a back on it, um, but I'm gonna sit at the edge of the chair. So I'm not all the way back. So my sit bones right now are like all the way back. Um, and it's hard to do a lot of, of chair yoga this way. So that's why it's okay if you have something that doesn't have a back because we're at the edge. And then that's gonna allow you to sit tall. So if you've taken other yoga classes with me, a lot of times in seated poses, we'll sit on a folded blanket or perhaps a block or a bolster. And that helps you to tilt your pelvis slightly forward. So if I sit back, it's way easier for me to slump forward. Um, I can still slump forward up here, but it's kind of putting my body in a position that allows me to sit taller. It's much more natural than when I'm sitting back. So think about that. You want your um, feet to be evenly planted on the floor or the mat if you're using a yoga mat, and your knees are right above your heels and ankles. So nice 90 degree here. And then we're going to come into just how we begin class. Today. So you want to make sure you're sitting tall, your shoulders are above your hips, you feel firmly planted on your seat, and close your eyes or soften your gaze. I just have my hands on my thighs, but if it's comfortable for you to have them elsewhere, then please do that. So just starting to connect with your breath, feeling the expansion of your heart on your inhale and the softening of your heart on your exhale. Take an inhale, allow it to be deeper, longer, really feel your heart expand. And as you exhale, release, allow your heart to really soften here and start to open your eyes. So we're going to come into a side stretch and there's a few ways that you can do this. Um, I probably mentioned this in my other classes. So I have a shoulder issue going on on this side. Um, and I recently found out it's not actually a shoulder issue. A lot of times we have pain in our body. It's coming from somewhere else. The body is fascinating things that happen. So it's actually something coming from my neck. And I'm trying to be really mindful of not triggering the tingling and numbness that normally happens in certain yoga poses for myself. Um, so you can decide how you want your arms to be in certain positions as we move through. So we're going to come into a side stretch. So it doesn't bother me to have this arm up. So if it feels good for you to stretch your arms up, you will. And all that's happening with my fingertips is they're reaching up toward the ceiling. I'm not doing anything else. But this side, it doesn't feel so great. So I'm going to come into cactus arms. And you're welcome to be here. Have your hands at your hips. Any variation that works for you. So let's inhale nice and tall and start to lift your arms into your position. 
and fully exhale. And then look, we're going to come into a side stretch over to the right. So keeping your arms even, even if they're up, you don't want them to just flop over. So I'm keeping my elbows wide. And there is a little bend on this side and more lengthening on this side. You just don't want to crunch over, right? So it's a lift and then you come over. And then let's come back up. And we'll go to the other side. So you're opening up the right side of your ribs, tilting to the left, making sure they're not just crunching over onto the left. It is a side bend, but not a side crunch. And then come back up and bring your arms back down. We're gonna come into a little bit of a twist. Since this is early in our practice, it won't be a big twist. So start with your hands at your hips. So we're gonna to start to twist to the right. So because we're seated, there's not as much movement in the hips, but don't like swing your hips over, but also don't like hold them as you twist. Allow it to be natural, whatever happens in your pelvis, in your hips. But we're thinking about the twist starting at the belly button. So I'm gonna start with my hands at my hips. I'm nice and tall here. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna start to move from my belly button. So as you see, if my hands stay at my hips, I don't twist very far and this might be okay for you. If you want, you can take your left hand on the outside of your right knee. Your other hand stays at your hips. So think about inhaling, getting tall, and exhale, possibly moving deeper into the twist. You won't go very far, because where our other hand is placed, but that idea of lengthening and deepening. Same thing with the heart, right? On your next exhale, come out of your twist, back to center. Hands at your hips again if you move them. Inhale nice and tall. On the exhale, starting at your belly button, starting to turn to the left. Maybe this side, you need to be a little more gentle in your twist. You can bring your right hand to your left knee to open up into your twist. And same idea, inhale lengthening. Exhale, possibly moving deeper in the twist. Even if you're not actually moving, and think about those sensations in your body. And your knees are still right above your hips, so it's easy to press your hand in and move your knees. So you're really like grounded through your feet. The next time you exhale, you're gonna come out of your twist. Then we're gonna come into a forward fold. Um, so you could come more like into a child's pose if you want, but since it's early, I was thinking we'll start to hinge. So we lengthen once again, and then we hinge in our hip creases. So we're not bending in our back or our waist, right? This is not what we want to do, even though it might feel really good. We're going to inhale tall and hinge at the hip creases. And then I'm going to bring my forearms onto my thighs and have my hands active and my palms facing toward each other. So I teach a variation like this in uh, my Hatha classes where if coming uh, into a full forward fold for your body is not appropriate, this is a better variation. Let's bring our hands to our thighs as you inhale to come back up and fully exhale. We're gonna come into a back bend. So I'm gonna turn just so that you can see as we set up. So you could either have your hands at your hips or you could hold the back of your chair, either um, the back of it, if there is a back, or on the side. So you need to find the best spot for you. I'll probably hold the back when I come back in that position, but I just want you to see my body. So a heart opener, we're thinking about the front of the heart and the back of the heart. So it's really easy to dump in our neck or our low back, right? And come into a heart opener. Listen to my voice, it totally changes. So the heart opener comes from here the thoracic spine where we're pretty tight and sticky and we don't go very far. So I'm trying to keep it out of my low back, I'm trying to stay even here in my low belly and my low back and not dump my head back. So my neck is following. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the edge, plant through my feet, sit nice and tall. I'm gonna bring my hands to the back of my chair. That's the best place for me. And then think about inhaling, lifting and exhale, opening your heart. those upper arm bones moving behind you your shoulder blades are coming together slightly like the lower tips of shoulder blades come together upper parts of shoulder blades get wider and then inhale back up fully exhale nice just take a moment 
If you need to adjust your feet or how you're seated on your chair, please do. And then we're gonna come into a pelvic tilt. So again, I'll turn to the side because it's easier to see me in my profile, but I'll come back. So pelvic tilt, if you're familiar with cat-cow, it's like cat-cow, but seated. So when you exhale, you round. So you're tucking your tail under and your spine follows and your head and neck move last. And then when you inhale, it starts at your tail. So you're lifting your tail up. Your spine follows, your heart opens, your head and neck slightly lift. So again, this is a back bend, so we're not jumping here. And then as we exhale, once again, coming into that seated cat, we round into flexion. And then when you inhale, opening up, taking in that air, coming into extension. Let's do that a couple more times. You go to your own breath. for us just to make this movement because it's fairly simple. So notice that that's happening and see if you can connect your breath once again with your movement. So the breath dictates the movement. When you're complete with this next round, come back to center. Hmm. So if you have a strap or strap like I Um, if you don't, I'll show you how to use without. You're going to hug your right knee into your chest. And this is a little awkward on a chair, but it'll be okay. And then you put the strap around your foot. So either the ball of your foot or more at the top of your heel. So the top of your heel is right before it meets the arch. So you find the best spot for you. And then you extend your leg out long. So you want to stay tall. I'm going to adjust a little bit because I came a little bit far on my chair. And your leg could be all the way down on the floor, right? It could even be touching the floor as long as you're active here. So that's a possibility if you don't have a strap, you could just have your leg out long. You also have the option to bring your hand behind your thigh. So it's a little more work for your arms. So leg is as straight as it can be, spine is tall, other foot really grounded into your floor or mat. And your breath is flowing. So notice where you feel tension. So a lot of times we hold tension in places we don't need to, like our hands, our jaws, our foreheads. For me, I'm feeling a lot of work in my thigh, my inner hip. So how can I soften that? And that's a good question. I don't always know the answer to it. Sometimes it's a matter of letting go a little bit, like physically letting go. Some of it's thinking about directing your breath into that position, into that place. And then let's bend that knee and hug it back in. So you can just kind of set your strap down, hug it in. So you might want to do a little bit of circling here. Ooh, that feels good. My hip, especially my inner hip. And then we'll set that foot back down. And then you'll hug your left knee into your chest. You want to still sit tall. Make sure you don't round here. So if that means having your hands behind your knee or not even holding on, then that's better for you. And then let's take our strap or strap for like item onto our foot or bring your hand behind your thigh or just extend your leg out to heel on the floor or start to lift depending on what is best for you today. And this side is different than the first side, so honor that. And I'm gripping as tightly as I can onto my strap. So I'm seeing if I can let go of that a little bit, pressing through my heel. So for me, it's okay to press through all four corners of my foot. For people with sciatica, that might not be okay. And so you more press through the ball of your foot. But check, if you don't have anything racing up your leg or into your back, you're probably okay pressing through your heel. But checking, make sure it's okay. One side is different than the other. Many people with sciatica only have it on one side. Then we'll bend our knee, release the strap, hug it in. If you want to do those circles a little bit, one direction, and then the other, and set your foot back down, adjust on your chair if you need to. And I'm going to set my feet a little bit wider, and I'm going to hold on to my chair. You could have your hands at your hips at the back of your chair. We're going to do a little bit of windshield wipering, so moving your knees one side. So we go to our breath. You exhale. 
and then inhale up and exhale the other way. So there's not as much movement here in the chair. You could do more movement if that's okay for you. So I'm gonna hold on to the back of my chair and I'm actually gonna let my hips kind of shift. I inhale up and then I exhale the other way. So my sit bones, my hips are shifting. If that's too much for you, then just do the smaller windshield wipering. One more round. It works, my pants are just kind of helping me to glide along my chair, depending on what you're wearing and what you're sitting on. That might not be as easy to make those movements. You just do your best. All right, <clears throat> let's hug our right knee back in. And then this time, if it's okay, you're gonna have your hand behind your thigh. I know that legs can feel really heavy. So if you need to come down, then come down. So I'm sitting tall, and then we're just gonna circle our ankle in one direction about four times, and then we'll circle the other way. You can give yourself a break. If it's difficult to hold your leg, come back to center. And let's do some pointing and flexing. One more time. Nice, hug your knee back in. Set your foot down. Hug your left knee in. Hands at the back of your thigh. Adjust as you need to. And let's do those circles of the ankle. About four times in one direction. And then four times in the other direction. Sometimes I lose count. I do my best. And then we'll come to that pointing and flexing. One more round. to seated, seated tall. Hmm. Let's hug our right knee back into our chest. Your left foot can stay on the surface, your mat, the floor, or you can start to extend out. So that takes a little more effort, a little core. So if it's too much, then you bend your knee and you come back. And then let's have both feet flexed if they're if your other, if this leg is extended, if not, then it's flexed because it's pressed into the floor. And then we'll bring our left knee to bend and bring our right foot back to the mat. Sit tall again. And then opposite sides, hug your left knee in. Sitting tall, check in. If it's okay, you'll extend your right leg through that so either ball or heel and then this top foot is also active try to keep your chest open so I did mention this on the first side but you can always have your hands underneath like for me my arms aren't very long and so sometimes I feel like I'm holding on for dear life so check in with that let's bend our right knee foot to the mat left foot back to the mat sitting tall once again then we're going to come into a forward fold. So you could do that earlier forward fold where you hinge and bring your forearms down to your thighs. If you feel like it would be okay for you, you're going to start to hinge more and bringing your torso onto your thighs, relaxing your head and neck. So this is kind of a variation of child's pose. If this isn't okay for you, come back to that half fold or just back up into a seat. If you are more forward, don't hold your head up. Allow your head and neck to relax. You don't want to just dump it. You're kind of in between holding it up and just completely letting it go. Get all the way down. We'll bring our hands back up to our thighs. We'll slowly press back up into a seat. And then um, we're going to do downward facing dog. So there's a few ways you can do downward facing dog. You could stay in your chair. And this time you would extend both of your legs out long. So you want to be active. And then you could reach your arms forward and they could stay here. For me, if I were staying here, I would probably come into cactus arms. Um, you can start to lift your arms more up. They can come up by your ears or be in between or straight forward. So tall spine. So that's an option. I'm going to come into a downward facing dog using my chair. So if that's okay for you, you can come up to standing. I'm going to adjust my chair. 
I'm gonna have my hands on the seat of the chair. And then I'm gonna step my feet back. So my spine is still pretty long. Really pressing through my feet and then shifting my hips back. So my hands are even on my chair. I'm gonna relax my head and neck. I could bend my knees and help to lift even more. So you guys get, you get to decide how much you come into this because I can feel in my shoulders and my arms, but if that's too much, then maybe you back off. So if you're in the uh, down dog seated, start to bring your feet back to your mat and your hands back to your hips or thighs. And if you're in this variation with the dog, we start to walk our feet forward, coming into a forward fold for a moment, whether your hands are on the seat or your forearms are on the seat. And if you're seated, you want to come into another forward fold, either with your forearms on your thighs or coming more forward like a child's pose, you're welcome to do that. If you're standing, bring your hands back to your chair, then hands to your hips and lift up. And if you're seated, hands on your thighs and come back up into a tall position. So we're going to do a little bit of balance work. Balance is really important, even though we're not good at it, right? So we need to keep doing it. If this is absolutely not okay for you, then you stay seated. No need to come up. Um, if you wanted to do that hugging of your knee in again and extending the opposite leg, there's a little bit of core work going on there. You're welcome to do that. Or you can just be seated for a moment. Um, and you can do what's called watch asana and you can watch me balance. So I'm going to use the chair, but you could use a wall or you could try to do your balance without, um, without support. So you get to decide. So whatever, um, if you are using support, your leg that's closest to that, that's what's gonna, that's where you're gonna stand. So you might be on a different side than me. So I like to have my other hand at my hip and I start even in my feet. And then I'll bring my hand to my support, my other hand to my hip. And I'm gonna lean a little bit more into my standing leg as I bend my other knee. And this could be your um, balance today. Or you stand on one foot and then decide. Do you need that support? And if the answer is yes, then you use it. So feel the pressing through your standing leg and foot as you lift up to your belly. Your heart is open, so your spine is tall. There may be wiggle, wobble, falling over. And then we'll release, give it a good shake. I'm going to move my chair to the other side. Come back to my mountain pose, my Tadasana. I feel really grounded and rooted here. Hand at my chair, other hand at my hip. Start to lean my weight into my standing leg that's closest to my support. And then I decide if I lift that opposite foot up or keep the big toe on the mat. You could totally work there. Decide if your hand stays on your support, comes to your hips or any variation. So really standing, like if I really think about Rooting through my foot and my leg, it helps me to lengthen my spine. And then let's release. Maybe you want to give it a good shake. Then we're going to come back down into our seat. Situating on the edge, sitting tall. And let's uh, hug our right knee into our chest. We're going to come into a figure four, so you're going to bring your ankle over your knee. If this is way too much for you today, then you do ankle over ankle. So you're still doing a little bit of a hip opener. If you're here, you could press your right hand into your thigh. Don't press it into your knee to help move your knee away. So kind of thinking about that motion. Um, if you can get your ankle across your knee, same idea. You could press your hand into your thigh. This foot's active. We sit tall. Ooh. We did figure four. Then let's hug that knee back in. 
and set your foot down. Then we'll go to the other side. You might want to check in if, it, if you can barely even get it up, then you just bring your foot across your other ankle. And you can work from there, and then maybe that's something you work up to. You can cross your ankle over your knee, you will, having your top foot active, sitting tall. If you want to help, it might be enough just on its own, right? And it's not like we're pressing, we're just giving it a firm pressure to help guide the open door, right? So if we're up here, we want to we wanna allow it, and the longer we hold this pose, the more open we might get. So everyone's going to be in a different place, and you just work with where you are. So you check out the rest of the body. So are you manipulating the rest of your body to open this hip? And if the answer is yes, don't do that. You want to allow it to work with what you have going on in your body. And maybe it feels really good, but then you're doing weird, not nice, kind things to the other parts of your body. So we want to keep all of our bodies safe. And then let's hug that knee in and set your foot back down on the mat. Nice and tall once again. Let's come into a twist. So if you like the twist that we did earlier where we started with our hands and our hips, and then open up, you're welcome to stay there. If you want to go a little deeper, we'll twist to the right first. Bring your right hand onto your chair, whether it's the back of the chair or the seat. And then your um, left hand will come on the outside of your right knee and we'll come into a twist. So it's a little bit of a bigger twist. So if that's too much, then you back off. Um, my, my left hand and arm are active and I'm not pressing all the way over, right? There is a firm press into the side of my leg, but then my leg's pressing into my hand and arm as well. So I come into my twist. Inhale nice and tall. Let's exhale and start to move over to the left. You could bring your hand onto your chair, your right hand on the outside of your left knee. Your spine is still tall, heart open. Fully inhale and fully exhale. So we're coming to one more baby back bend. So if it's okay for you to inhale your arms all the way up, I'm gonna inhale my arms into cactus. If your arms are up, your palms are facing toward each other. If you're in cactus, they're forward. And then that idea of lifting from our hearts once again, so not from the neck or the low back. If you need to make an adjustment here. I do Shavasana differently in my chair yoga. We stay in our seat. But if you'd like to come down into a Shavasana, you're welcome to do that. You're also welcome to pause, uh, do your Shavasana, and join at the end. Um, we won't be here very long. So that might be all that you have time or energy for today. And that's totally fine and appropriate. If you can do a longer Shavasana, even better. Five, 10, 15 minutes using props that you have, blankets, towels, any sort of rolls to put under your knees, you're welcome to do that. If you're staying seated, let's start to settle in. So checking in that your sit bones are even on your chair, your feet feel even, your knees are above your heels, your spine is tall. We don't want to concentrate too much on the, on the body, but we want to be comfortable. So thinking about the crown of your head reaching toward the ceiling, your big open heart, you're connected with your sit bones and your feet. Those are the roots right now. And your hands and arms are just comfortable. And you bring attention back to your breath. So thinking about your beautiful expanding heart on your inhale and your beautiful heart softening on your exhale.
international inhale. See if it can be longer, fuller, deeper. And release your exhale with a sigh. Try to make little movements here, fingers and toes. We could stretch, come into a mini twist. Move your head and neck side to side. moment you can open your eyes and then we'll come back to that seated position sitting tall connected to the roots of our feet the roots of our sit bones our hearts are open crowns of our heads are reaching toward the ceiling and we'll bring our hands together at heart center and anjali mudra to seal our practice together you can keep your eyes open soften your gaze or close your eyes Keep peace in your mind, keep strength in your body, and keep love in your heart. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. If you have any questions about this sequence or any of my YouTube yoga videos, feel free to email me at therealgofitgirl at gmail.com. You can email me with any sorts of questions. You can also comment below. You can find me on social media, Facebook and Twitter at GoFitGirl and Instagram as TheRealGoFitGirl. I hope you have a great day and I hope to practice with you again soon. Thank you so much.